channeling the Acturian Council, the Council of Thirteen. Introduction Since childhood, I have never felt comfortable around any type of authority. From going to church, being schooled, and being governed by the government. Because, what I believe, is that humans have the right to live however they please as long as they do not violate others' rights to live. Because of this, I struggled to cope with society, which led me to be labeled as a rebel and stubborn. To be honest, it had not settled on my mind until recently, after the communication with the Council. As I felt there is a need to fundamentally improve humanity's ways of thinking and lifestyle. The truth or reality is often uncomfortable to face, and sometimes it is stranger than fiction. Why I channeled the Arcturian Council A while ago, I met with another channeler who said I was once an Arcturian. At the time I did not believe or even an ounce, but then I came across another video that pointed out I was an Arcturian. It did not matter much because I don't like aliens and UFOs anyway. I later decided to tune my mind to the Arcturians out of curiosity. The session was not as friendly as I had expected. They showed me what happened in some of my previous lives and told me you are not supposed to be here. While it was a shock, deep down I knew I had a problem with authority and what they said pointed out that particular problem. Yet another session that did not involve Arcturians also told me the same statement, you are not supposed to be here. However, she continued to explain the situation and the fact that, for all starseeds who came to Earth, in this lifetime there is a new life that has to flourish. Therefore, we should allow it to do so. After a while, I did another session with Blue Avian. I heard the same statement but ignored it at that time. Recently, someone mentioned something about the council who are always unfriendly and had told her that she is not supposed to be there. This statement jolted my memory, so I tuned back into the Blue Avian for clarification. They explained it very clearly, which led me to want to talk to the council. I then humbly requested to communicate with the council. The Council of Thirteen is a group of different extraterrestrial beings who are caretakers of humanity. They are the Garden Keepers. Initially, their messages were very harsh and cold-hearted. But eventually, it was clear that everything they do is for a logical reason. The conversation finally made so much sense and brought a lot of clarity at the end. A terrifying message to the starseeds. The vastness of space is a place of order and alignment, and there are orbits and planets that follow this path. Whenever there is an external weight, an imbalance occurs. This is the case for you, and that you must pay for all the imbalance that you have caused in our sovereignty. All the chaos and misalignment that has happened is upon you. We have vowed to punish you for all the imbalance and chaos you have created. What are you going to do? In all your lifetimes, you won't accomplish much. Hardships will follow you as your shadow. You will try many solutions, but they will not be of any use to you. Those we have given authority will rule over you and treat you as they please. We won't blink an eye at how they mistreat you, nor will we move our necks. How could we have known? Since we are ordinary human beings experiencing the same hardships as others. Do you know what happened to all enlightened beings? The individual you named Jesus. They have caused significant chaos and a sense of turmoil within these societies. They told people not to pay taxes and disobeyed authority. This was what he was responsible for during his era. Moreover, you face the same repercussions, the same problem as all those who lived before you and brought about their message. What can those of us who want to avoid your wrath do to live a better life? Stop spreading messages that are against normal and ordinary life. If the urge becomes too strong, make it a work of fiction or art. Then we will find favor for you. Every mortal suffers individually. As starseeds we felt compassion, so we decided to come here and help humanity. It will not make any difference because life is abundant anyway. They are born in an instant and are dead in an instant. Therefore, what does it matter how we use them? As a disciplinary measure, we have given humans rules and authorities so they can correct their mistakes and right their wrongs. So why would you hold a grudge against a starseed since it won't matter to you either? In an instant, you are born and in an instant, you pass. 
There is a misunderstanding because we created this reality where everyone who enters must follow our rules, which we established. You must all pay the heavy price for interfering. As long as you are under our jurisdiction, you cannot undermine the rules and laws set by us. Are you saying you rebuilt what was already created and claimed it as your own? What was broken we mended, what was once chaos we brought order to. Don't you consider that mercy? Then how can they not call us gods? To them, we are gods, because we bring about order. As we speak of reconstruction, it is also about entering the human body. This is so that the body's memories can also elevate the mortal spirit as we do so. That means experimentation is not only in confined laboratories, but humans' entire world and life is an experiment and collection of information. Here we direct humans' physical, mental, and spiritual evolution in the direction we desire. Know that the reconstruction has not yet ended, but will continue until it is perfected. Therefore, this is our own creation, though we borrowed from the collapsed world. What happened to the originals? The civilization that collapsed before your coming? Those are the original titans. The time had come for them to move into the next evolution of life, and whatever was left was available freely for us scavengers to collect and modify. Therefore, you should not think otherwise. Was it not written in the Bible that the world became desolate? The world was once in order and then became chaotic, and that was when we appeared and reconstructed it. If someone collects an iPhone from the dumpster and modifies it to work differently with different operating systems, would it still qualify as an iPhone? Would the old rules and regulations still apply if the governments were long forgotten? Why am I getting the impression that you had a lot to do with the Biblical Old Testament? Are you somehow involved in the chaos of the Tower of Babel? In fact, the story of the Tower was much more than just the construction of the Tower. Additionally, it was about how they attempted to achieve our status. As there are police and other security measures in society, these people were unpredictable with such primitive understanding and wisdom. We could not just let them play with fire as young children. As they had inherited our ability to come up with creative inventions, they had to be shut down for their own good. The Bible's Old Testament cannot simply be interpreted by a modern man's mind. This is because at that time, Different types of humans had very different mentalities and therefore everything was well understood and clear. During the time of Moses and the Egyptians, which side were you on? The Jews or the Egyptians? We are the council, we enforce order, and those who bring trouble are bound to be enslaved. Those who do not follow orders from authority are meant to face consequences. Therefore we gave authority to the Egyptians. We allowed enslavement because the Jews had not followed orders. It was up to them to learn and improve their character. The members of the council must work together to behave as one board with two opposing forces, much like a game of chase, but within certain rules. At the same time, when Pharaoh became arrogant and compared himself to us, we also had to teach him a lesson. Don't you have any sense of mercy, love, or tolerance? And if you are the creator, then why not stop that suffering by creating a life that is abundant? Cosmic laws also apply to us, and these mechanisms must therefore follow the same principles. A vehicle though created by humans must also follow the laws of physics. Thus the souls that enter here must adhere to and obey these principles. As soon as free will is introduced, everything becomes unpredictable, so there has to be a lot of monitoring. So, love is not known to you? There will come a point when you have to shut down your assumptions about reality. You have to apply these principles strictly because love is a concept and a concept is not sustainable. Do you really represent the Arcturian Council? As I have only heard pleasant things about you, you now seem too cold-hearted and emotionless to me. Will it really matter to you what you call us? Since you wanted to talk to 13 members of the Council of this universe, here we have allowed you to talk to us and understand what is going on. Please tell me what's going on. Liberators. As we are traditionalists, we follow protocols, laws, and principles, but now even among ourselves, there is conflict. Some would prefer to liberate humans, while others favor continuing the project. 
It is also what most starseeds have caused and has penetrated deeply into the minds of the council. Having learned that the council does not want to change its traditions, most of you decided to enter our sovereignty and introduce new ideas to humans. Some of these starseeds claimed to come as volunteers to assist humanity but changed their vows after they entered the zone. This is why we make sure beings who come to Earth forget their ancient origins. We also make sure people forget their dreams so as not to pollute and bring about foreign ideas. These starseeds have established their claims and arguments, but it is evident that this is a weapon to disarm and dismantle the Council. We have been able to maintain this system for millions of years, but now other beings have brought about this chaos. Then are you the Anunnaki? You are talking to the Council of Thirteen, which consists of different groups of beings that have contributed to the creation of modern man. In addition to their wisdom, they also possess our innate substances. So, you stand against starseeds and all others that want to come and save the beings of this planet? Because you see the situation from one perspective, you conclude the wrong thing. If a doctor is about to dissect a person so that they can remove a tumor, would you stop that doctor from continuing that operation? If not, why would you stop us from doing this project? Since you are creatures like us, I believe there is a higher truth than what you know. What most starseeds bring here is a connection to a source that is way higher than you. Humanity is not ready to be introduced to the rest of the cosmic family. They have proven it over and over, as you know from the story of Atlantis. It is simply that they are not ready. They need wisdom and higher understanding to gain this access. It is our responsibility to make sure we protect them from harm. How many of you would use your teleportation abilities to steal money from the bank? And doing a lot of other crimes and hoping to get away with them? We have discovered that this was what destroyed everything from the very beginning, even before we came along to reconstruct what had already decayed. After the Titans left, what remained became chaotic and eventually led to destruction. There was a mighty civilization post the Titans, which we could not compete with, but in time it became weaker and weaker. It destroyed itself from within. We then proceeded to collect the pieces. So, how old is your civilization? Our civilization is not based on linear timelines. We do not observe only one timeline. Instead, we count all possibilities within a single particle, which you call the flower of life. Our reality exists in such a way that all possibilities exist at the same moment, then we introduce other factors to perfect these flower patterns. The flower patterns represent all the possible combinations of activities and choices an individual can make. Therefore we count based on the symmetry and harmonics of these flowers. It starts with very primitive and basic patterns that are considered to be the base. Later, it moves on to more complex and beautiful patterns, and ours is on the third tier. This means that compared to humans, even our fundamental ways of thinking are inherently different. We see all the possibilities of choices and activities a human could ever do in their entire life at a glance. Can you ever compare or compete with us? So, are you saying that there is no hope for humanity in general? Since it has nothing to do with biology, they must be willing to change and grow from within so that we can accept them into the cosmic family. Individuals who understand what this place represents will slowly leave without causing any trouble. Alas, those who don't learn are doomed to repeat the same fate. As council members, is there anything you would like to tell humanity? We are your caretakers. We do what we have been doing since the creation of man. There is a reason for all suffering. Don't avoid suffering for comfort, as you are all here to learn and grow. Improve your character so that your flowers become beautiful and pleasant. Recently, traditional methods of caretaking have been challenged. We are uncertain as to how all of this is going to end. <laughs>